What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Steven Hyder with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Hey, guys, once again, Steven Hyder, Gate City Sports Channel. Look, if this is one of the first few times you've watched my video, if I can ask you guys to do me a huge favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. You have no clue how much that helps us. Also, to my OG subscribers, just anyone who just wants to support the channel in any general sense, guys, go ahead and hit that like button. That like button is what communicates with YouTube to let YouTube know to push our content across the platform and get other people involved. All right, y'all, let's get to today's topic. So, as I promised you guys yesterday, I told you, yesterday I focused on the defensive side of the ball. Today I'm going to focus on the offensive side of the ball. So, without further ado, guys, winning the line of scrimmage, the battle at the line of scrimmage on the offensive side of the ball, what I think might be the single most important key to this football game tomorrow. All right, y'all, let's go. Let's start talking about how we're going to get this W, guys. All right, roll the footage. Seahawks come with a blitz. Swens has time, though. It throws behind. All right, guys, jump into today's content really quickly today. First drive of the football game, pivotal third down. How does Seattle come out? Well, they come out in a diamond front, right? They, they're designating five people to rush. So you got someone playing a zero shade technique. You got someone playing a five technique. And this is all to the defensive left. And you got someone playing the joker technique, a stand-up rusher. He's pretty much in like what you would call a... a a seven or a nine technique. He's he's very far outside there. And then if you look to the defensive right, you got a linebacker up who's trying to get to that left guard. And then you got your five technique out there who's over the you know your left tackle. And look, they're gonna come, they're gonna bring the rush. We pick it up. We pick it up. This is one of the few times I wanted to show you on film that they challenged Kelsey and Kelsey held. It, it wasn't like that throughout the entirety of the game. But in this particular situation on a pivotal third down, I got to put this one on my man Carson. This was when he was kind of going through these weird struggles with his mechanics and his footwork in the pocket. And he just kind of, he just missed a little bit. He missed a little bit on that urge throw. He didn't miss by much, but it was enough to cause an incompletion there. These are things I think Carson has widely cleaned up. But nonetheless, get used to seeing this front because I guarantee you we're going to see a lot of it this Sunday. Hey guys, that zero shade is John Reed on Kelsey. Just a couple of notes there, guys. It looked like pretty much to me a cover one man concept there. Could could kind of be a cover two, but I doubt it. It could be cover two man under. There is kind of a weird uh, nickel kind of corner that comes in there, but I'm going to call that cover one man under. I don't think that's a cover two just from my experience playing, coaching. I would never call that a cover two concept just because that player does not back up and cover. He's not He's not deep enough for me. So cover one, man concept. You got a diamond front from the Seahawks. And look, man, they bring the house. They bring a six rusher. And look, running back steps up, blocks beautifully. It's a pretty nice, just pretty nice hole. Wentz does kind of step up in the pocket, avoids that outside rush, does a good job avoiding that joker on the, coming from the defensive left, offensive right. And he just, you know what, like I said, guys, he was going through a small little phase to where I, I broke down the videos for you. I showed you it. His pocket presence was a little off the mechanics. But you know what? Look, that was it, it, I, I have confidence if we can give him this kind of pocket on Sunday, Wentz is gonna light it up. He's gonna light it up. We're a different football team. And I gotta give Kelsey credit. Jerron Reed is a very good football player, but he's not a very big imposing dude. So that's a pretty favorable matchup for Kelsey. Now, we've caught a, a pretty big break here because Al Woods, who's a big physical guy he's out for the year for them for what probably would be the rest of the year because he got busted for PADs big physically imposing guy that really he ate up Kelsey in this game so that's a plus for the Eagles once again something falling in our favor much part of the reason why I feel very optimistic about this football game Guys, since we're talking about the offense, I just want to take one quick second here and just, I want to address a comment. On occasion, I'm still getting people who think Carson Wentz doesn't audible, does, like, doesn't do things within the pocket, and, and they're wrong. I'm sorry. You're wrong. Okay? I understand the emotion. I get it. 
At times, he has not played very well. But you're wrong in your assumptions. There is definitive proof in the film, and you clearly don't understand what part of the decision-making was over the last four weeks to get this offense rolling, which was to devolve power into Carson Wentz's hands, allow him to go up-tempo to make the play calls at the line. I'm sorry, you're wrong. That's clearly Carson Wentz there. I'm just showing you definitive proof. All the way back to week 12 when he was even struggling, that's an audible, guys. He's audibling the play. Wentz does a great job audibling the protection. Great pocket to throw. Hey, guys, now I want to get to my you got to be better than that moments here. So he might say, hey, bro, you got to bring that back, man. We haven't had a lot of opportunities to bring that segment back because the Eagles have been playing so damn well since that first half of the first Giants game. So it's been really hard to bring that segment back. Kudos to the Eagles. <laughs> but I got to say, Kelsey, bro, you got to be better than that. Give it to him again. Pressure in the backfield, trying to spin away. Seattle comes out and what is basically a 43 over going towards, it looks like Goddard's side of the offensive line. So it looks like that's the offensive right. They're in a 43 over defensive line, you know, alignment here. They have a zero shade this time with Al Woods over Kelsey. And it looks like they're either in a cover one or a cover two. The reason this is really difficult with Seattle is, is Seattle kind of is like Dallas where they run this really strange um, half half the field zone, half the, half the other side man concept that they do. So they can be really confusing with cover one compared to cover two and, and the looks they're giving you there. So just be aware. I think that I would still kind of consider, I would probably consider this one to be more cover two, but because of where Greg Ward Jr. is, they, they kind of have to go into that man concept on that side of the field. So it kind of backs them out of it a little bit. Now, what you're going to see here is, is I think this is my personal opinion. I think Kelsey was trying to pull to open that hole on the outside Basically, because, you know, you run out of cover two. So he's trying to open up a hole there, basically as a pulling center for Miles Sanders. And Miles Sanders was getting big chunk plays against them all game long, guys. Miles Sanders and I thought Greg Ward Jr., I thought we'd start to see them emerge in this game because they had really good games. But because Kelsey's kind of pulling, Al Woods gets into his body and blows this play up. I'll show it to you again, but I'll give you the coach's film of this. Watch as Al Woods get into, gets into Kelsey's body and blows this play up. As I stated earlier, having Al Woods out this game, it, look, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Al Woods not being in for this football game is a big deal because I thought that he was a wrecking ball down low. It was really hard for us to have an answer for. Now, I will say this. don't I think they have uh, Jefferson on that football team. He's another kind of physical guy. So we're not, we're, you know, we're not clear of everything yet. But I will say this, we're still catching lucky breaks because I'm going to tell you, I'm not buying I, I'm not buying the hype that their defensive line is healthy because their best player on the defensive line has a sports hernia. Look, I'll take a high sprain, you know, high ankle sprain over sports hernia if Lane Johnson plays. I'll take Viatai over sports hernia, to be real with you. It's not an easy injury to play through. So I think that's that's a pretty fatal blow there. Now. This is what I will tell you. Jerron Reed is a special type football player. So you can't just think because Jadavion Clowney has a sports hernia that they can't get a pass rush on. They can. Una Ford and Jerron Reed are smaller guys. But look, they do play pretty well when, when it's rushing downs. They can get up the field. They can get penetration. They can shoot the gap on you. So we still have to be disciplined, and we still need to pay very close attention to the, the way that these guys are getting pressure, okay? We need to be careful because they will go diamond front on you. They will go 43 over on you. They will try to create those one-on-one -on -one matchups and let guys like Jerron Reed beat you. By the way, Isaac Suomalu, can you please not get lifted in the air again and have a swim move put on you, a move I ain't seen since the early 90s when Reggie White was playing? Because I got to tell you, it was ridiculous to watch that on film. Right now. See, the Eagles can do anything with under a minute to go. They come near side, get it to the other tight end, Goddard. To me, this is the largest key to victory, guys. Win the battle at the line of scrimmage. Win this football game. Because as you go back through, and I do encourage you guys, tomorrow morning or tonight, sit down and watch the replay of this football game. 
we squandered a hell of a lot of opportunities to put this team out of its misery. We were able to move the ball up and down the field on this team. They're not very good at defending the running game. And I got to tell you, with this newfound offensive identity we have, I got a feeling we're going to be a lot more efficient in the passing game. Carson Wentz is playing at a much different level right now than he was during the first time these two teams met. I have all the confidence in the world that we are going to take it to this Seattle Seahawks football team. And that is no slight against Russell Wilson because that man can ball out and we all know it. With that said, I got a lot of faith in what's going on in this locker room for the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, guys, this was my key to victory from the offensive side of the game, especially from the offensive lines play. Look, we just got to be a little better up front. I showed you some of the good and I showed you a lot of the bad. But nonetheless, the keys to victory are right there, guys. Control this line of scrimmage offensively and defensively. And I got a good, good feeling about this football game. All right, y'all. That's my content for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, if you're not subscribed, please do me a huge favor. Please hit that subscribe button, guys. It does a lot to, to grow this network, guys. And also, just do me a huge favor. If you genuinely enjoyed the content, go ahead and hit that like button. Communicate with YouTube. Let them know I'm out here. It helps, guys. All right, y'all. You know what time it is. We close out these videos by doing a little something where we go E-A-T-L-E-S. Let's go, Eagles, guys. All right, y'all. Playoff football. Are y'all ready? I know I'm ready. I'm about to get my gear ready for tomorrow right now. All right, y'all. Peace. Don't forget, tomorrow, we're going to do a little pregame show. Philly Mike, myself, Philly Fresh. 30 minutes, maybe an hour, guys. Make sure y'all tune in for that. It's going to be pretty cool.